You're quite known for going after people. Imagine getting fired from a high school because you sexually assaulted and groomed children. Because she edits her photos. That in 2017, he was sentenced to 12 years for sexually abusing a four-year-old girl. And I mean, it's pretty obvious to me that she edits all of her photos. You can see the bent railing here. I mean, there's just no denying this. You took inches, inches, inches off your waist. What's the driver for you? Like, you know, go mad. Mm -hmm. Gallon of milk a day. I, I wrote a book making fun of it once. I called 35 eggs a day. It was basically admitting that I was lying and that I was just messing with you and that I'm a nobody online and you believed me. So what are all of these other people that are way, way, way more influential telling you that it's bullshit? Welcome to the show, John. Welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah, that's usually what you say, right? <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the show. Where, okay, where did that start? Where, where did, well, how'd you get your nickname, by the way? Let's start there. Uh, it was so stupid. you know what Reddit is? Yeah, I yeah. do. So I posted, on, I used to post on Reddit in the Reddit bodybuilding subreddit okay. when I was competing. And I, I was like, nobody knew who I was. My username had nothing to do with goo. It was like John something. And I posted a, a physique update because I was competing and tracking my progress. Mm -hmm. And my caption for it was, Please don't mind my goober face. I just woke up because like it was like a front double bicep and I was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and like three people saw it. And then the next day, for whatever reason, people were like, I left a comment somewhere and they were like, hey, yeah, whatever, goob. That was, was it. Like, what the fuck is and I, it just kept happening. And then there was a confusion on the Reddit because my name was John. And then there was a guy named goob that people knew about. And so I just changed my username because they thought it was two different people. And I was like, no, it's me. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. Oh, so, so, so tell me then how does this, okay. You, you've competed. You've also done powerlifting too. Haven't you? Mm -mm. You just, you just strength train really heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you actually did a powerlifting. No, movie. I never, I didn't even know it was a thing. I just, cause I knew what bodybuilding was. Cause I went to a gym that had a bunch of bodybuilders in it. Yeah. And I was like, cool. And I really should have done powerlifting. Cause I'm like way better at that. How, well, how far did you do the bodybuilding? How long did you do that for? Uh, I competed four years while I was in law school, like every year. And then the year after that. And I mean, like I would win my show, but like I sucked. Like I couldn't go to like a big show and win. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't go to nationals. Like I knew that I sucked. But it's like beating other people that suck a little more than you. It's like, <laughs> doesn't make you great. <laughs> what, what was like, your... oh, I went to the Krispy Kreme Classic. Like, I was number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, take us back then there. to how this all... And you have a law degree, which I had no idea. So let's take us, take us back a little bit. What, what? Let's start with how you got to what you're doing now. So you, you, you were in law school. Were you working out before that? Yeah. Was strength training and fitness a thing for you as a kid? How uh, did that all start? I, I was like a gamer for a really long time. Okay. And I woke up, I was like 20, and I just looked in the mirror and I was like, wow, I suck. Mm. <laughs> and I just went to the gym that day. <laughs> and that was the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Then, Did you fall in love with it right away? It was awesome, man. It was, I mean, it was cool. I just, you know, it, like how, how everybody starts, you're like, I'll get on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're like, what's over there? What are the weights? And I accidentally joined this gym that was like full of bodybuilders. And how old were you? You said 20? Yeah, I was like 20, 21. Oh, good deal. Any idea you know what you're doing? Like how do you, I mean, uh, imagine a lawyer guy like you, did you do research before you went into no, it or did you just, just blindly walk Any bodies that got you in there? Or it was huh? just your own initiative? It wasn't your buddies? It was It was Mr. Mark Ripto, honestly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, about the, about the start and strength, drank the milk, you know. See, it's actually, that's, it's that's hilarious. an incredible place to start. That's the yeah. best yeah. place to start. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Lucky yeah. yeah. There's Honestly. so much crap that's out there. And uh, people, when they look at like starting strength, like, oh, this is so basic. That's like one of the best programs. Yeah, it's yeah. one it's of the best basic. programs that's out there. And uh, like, you know, Go Mad, mm -hmm. Gallon of Milk a Day. I, I made a, I wrote a book making fun of it once. I called 35 eggs a day, which you say, like, there's so much stupid shit out there. Yeah. Like, I got into strength training and then, like, I was online posting about it, like, competing and stuff. And people would always be like, what do you do? How do you, what do you, what's your diet? What do you eat? And I would always say, oh, I eat 35 eggs a day just because I thought it was funny. Like, it was just a joke. And people started taking it seriously. And my social media started to grow. And people would like Snapchat me or like DM me, like, dude, I'm like on my 13th egg today. Like, I don't know how you do this. And I'd have to be like, fucking stop. Like, I'm joking. It, people were defending it like a dissertation. They're like, well, I mean, look how much protein and fat. And if you did this every single day, it would only cost this much money. And so it got out of hand. Like all these people were trying this stupid, not real diet. And so I wrote a book called 35 eggs a day. And it was saying like, 
it was basically admitting that I was lying and that I was just messing with you and that I'm a nobody online and you believed me. So what are all of these other people that are way, way, way more influential telling you that is bullshit? Wow. And at the end of the book, I just give like a basic, like this is the basic bullshit that I do that you should probably do too. Like go buy a good kitchen knife and cutting board. How about some fucking Tupperware? Mm. I don't know. Go grocery shop. So it had to be like the spark where you saw like, oh, wow, look how easy this is to manipulate people. It, yeah, it was. I was like, wow, because I was I had a couple hundred followers on Instagram and like people knew me on the Reddit, the, the Reddit bodybuilding thing. And they were changing. These motherfuckers were going to the grocery store and buying dozens of eggs. Mm. <laughs> added, think about that. Wow. And it's like, why 35? Why not 36? What do you do with the extra egg? Answer these questions for me, sir. Yeah, it was really stupid. So, was it, so this was the beginning of you seeing because what's interesting about the muscle building space, that especially that hardcore space uh, online, is if you give accurate, basic information, nobody cares. It's oh, not oh, sexy. Not only is it not sexy, but maybe you're lying. You're not telling us the truth. Yeah. But if you tell me something crazy and outlandish, within yeah. the realm of what they would consider, you know, uh, like oh that makes sense. So it has to be with, do with protein. Or something anabolic, yeah. or maybe oh, red meat. Eggs get you yeah. jacked. There must be. Yeah. So um, then people kind of take it seriously. Was so this the beginning of you kind of looking into the space and going, oh, well, this is crazy? Yeah. Well, I got smacked with like this huge, you know, people believe your bullshit. And I think if I was an evil person, I could have been like, oh, <laughs> oh, right. fuck yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Here's exactly what I do. But instead, I was like, let me write this stupid book, throw it on Amazon which is very easy to get published, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> they do it for you, print it for you, and ship it out to people. Mm -hmm. It was stupid. And then, like, they're reading the book thinking, like, oh, let's see. I guess I exploited them just a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, they're like, oh, let me see what the diet's about. And it's like, fuck, he was lying. Mm. All right, well, here's some basic shit anyway. Did you, know? you sell a lot of them? <laughs> yeah. How many was, books did you sell? A lot, a lot. It was Really? Was, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, like, more than a thousand? What a trick. Yeah, more than a thousand. Yeah. It was stupid. Holy shit, bro. You sold yeah. more than a thousand of a bullshit book like that? I made it. it the ebook was like four bucks, and then you could get it printed for like $14 or something. And I didn't have to do anything because Amazon would just like print it. Yeah, yeah, they'll the print percentage. it as they sell them. Yeah, and there was a lot out there. There was a lot. It still has good Amazon reviews. <laughs> At last that I checked. Okay, so no, explain that. This so is how, tripping how, out of the kid. Yeah, yeah. How, okay, how do, how do you basically tongue-in-cheek tell people you're eating 35 eggs, a bunch of people follow it, then you kind of feel like an asshole, and you go, okay, let me let me expose myself, write a book, and then charge you to yeah. read this book. And then I read the book, and I see you know, I was being lied to the whole you time. Do. And I give you a good review? This Nobody doesn't make sense mad. to me. Nobody was mad. What? I would be pissed. Hold on. Did you sell more you have like success stories in there? <laughs> 35 <laughs> eggs a day. There's 55 ratings on it. Four wow. and a half stars. Wow. Jeez, four and a half stars. That's Hold on a second. Good. Did you, okay, you sold more than a thousand of these? Yeah. Did you sell more bit. than 5,000 of them? Uh, I don't know. I had it on, uh, there was an, an ebook platform also. And it was a thousand, bro. That's a lot. Well, I'm already, I'm just tripping right yeah, now. That's oh, I know. So you actually made some money. Yeah, this was 2007, 2016. I was I, I was in law school at the time, and yeah. I didn't want to do my finals. <laughs> so this is what you and do. so I wrote this book because I'm a, I'm fucked in the head, and I was like, I'll write a book. Like I did not want to study for finals because it was no, December six. I remember my birthday this year. I had to take a final on my birthday, and so I was like, fuck, I don't want to do that. So I wrote this stupid book. Wow. And so uh, and now at this point, are you at all thinking I'm going to work in this industry? Or are you like, well, that was a fluke. That was weird. Let me just keep going to law school because I'll be a lawyer. I was insanely poor during this. And I would, was definitely not thinking that anybody would buy it. And I did it as a procrastination thing. And as soon as I dropped it, I was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. <laughs> like a ton of people bought it. And then, I mean, it wasn't for like six more years that I started like really leaning into any social media, anything. Mm. Like this happened and I was like, that was cool. So that was a spark. And then from this point, you're just going to school now. You're just yeah. going to school and working out on your own. Yeah. And and, and when are you when are you starting to fall in love with with working out? Is it right around this time? Oh, Ben, I was deep. I was deep at that point. What were the things about it that you loved the most that you that you fell in love with? Just that you could change your body, that it was something that was kind of growth minded and this is what I can do. It's just I don't know. It's like that consistent, it's like Netflix. You know, like yeah. you, you know, some people they go home to watch. <laughs> you just TV. compared with some ways to Netflix. <laughs> it's literally Netflix. Because it's I don't know, some people they see it as like, oh fuck, I have to go work out. But it's like an enjoyable thing that you go, you, mm -hmm. you know all the people there. I don't know. It's like a sense of community. I like that shit. That's your sign that you're different, bro. What that, that just the fact yeah. that you compare it to Netflix and you think of it like that is that's always to me a sign that like we're different. 
like that's yeah. you have to remember that it's enjoyable. Like, it, like it's really fun yeah if you, you do it the right way like it's really fun did you yeah. know that did you know you're doing it the right way did you see results like come on really fast oh no no i don't mean the right like when you say the right way is like programmed and like linear and like yeah. the right way is like I, I, i've always just sort of done what i wanted you know like okay when i was competing and stuff like yeah followed a rig mm -hmm. rigorous plan but like the goal of execution was like what i wanted to do so like the right way for me was like i have to execute this nowadays it's like the right way for me is like i wonder if i could do this and like <laughs> yeah. set now, some stupid shit up and film it now at this point you're like yeah but i'm going to law school i'm gonna be a lawyer that's what i want to yeah do. when did you decide i'm not going to be a lawyer i'm gonna go do something else Hey, real quick, this episode is brought to you by PRX. This is home gym equipment that is incredible and space saving, and they have Black Friday deals going on right now. Just click on this link. I uh, I started, so, well, I had a Honda Accord at the time that was being repossessed, mm. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, I can't pay my rent this month. If I pay for the Accord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to let them fucking take it. And I remember being like, well, people ask me, because I was competing at the time, you know, broke bodybuilder story. And people would always ask me like, Oh, what do I do for this? What do I do for that? And I was like, I wonder if I could do online training. And I sort of wrote out this like plan while I was in the shower on my phone. Like, all right, if I got this many clients at this rate, I could get this many people and, and I could pay my rent and I could keep my car. Like that'd be cool. And so I put a little thing together, made a website, got a GoDaddy and uh, launched it and I, I posted it on Reddit and I posted it on Instagram and I was like, Hey guys, you know, I'm training a few clients, whatever it is, online training. And like 65 people reached out Wow! and like hired me. Cause my price was stupid. It was like $60 a month or something. Oh, something and I, well, this was at a time that not everybody was online coaching. It yeah. wasn't this super huge space where there's guys charging five, $600 a month. And you're and at this, and this point, this point you've been active for years in these forums. So, yeah. so people know you yeah. because you're so active. In yeah. I mean, Reddit at the time had maybe like three quarters of a million people on it right. in the Reddit bodybuilding subreddit. And they'd like somehow made me a mod after the 35 eggs a day bullshit. Mm. <laughs> and so people knew me and I was a recognized. So that gives you the authority like, right there. Yeah. 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 Right. And so people would, you know, happily hired me and I super undercut myself on accident because I didn't know the space of online coaches charging like 300, 400, 500 dollars a month. And so I did that and got a whole bunch of people. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> This could be something. So I restructured, changed my prices a little bit. And now, now at this point, your, your only experience in fitness is you, you trained yourself, right? You work yourself out. You read a lot. When you're getting 60-something clients uh, who are now hiring you, are you thinking to yourself like, I'm not a coach. I'm not a trainer. Or what, how do you coach them, in other words? What do you do? So at this point, I'd, I'd work with a ton of people for free. Just because I'd received so many, like you get so many DMs, you get it all okay. the time. Like, what do I do for this? And right. So you have experience doing that. Yeah. And I would just always tell them the same thing that the guy who coached me told me, like, act like you paid me money and I'll act like you did mm -hmm. and execute this thing. Guys who wanted to train for a show. And so I'd probably had 30 or 40 people that I'd worked with and trained successfully to okay. either win shows or place really well. And it was cool because when I launched, I was able to not say, hey, look at pictures of me, you know. Look, look what I look like. You should hire me. It was right. my clients and people that had not paid me, but I had done a, a good job for. Mm. So okay. I could like sort of splash on and be like, here's 50 people that I've worked with. So now you have some experience essentially with that. Yeah, yeah. You, these people hire you, these 60 people, you start working with them. And are you enjoying it? It was so fun. Yeah, it was great. I mean, it was cool. It's like, oh, I can be in sweatpants. But at this point, are you still Saturday. like, I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm not going to do anything in fitness. Uh, Kind of, yeah. Because... Mm. Uh, I mean, it was a lot, you know, a bunch of people hire you all at once and then more people and they refer their friends and then you have to raise your yeah. prices and that shit starts happening. I'm like doing finals in law school. I have a, uh, I'm not a clerk, but like a desk bitch at mm. a law firm. <laughs> I'm working at the law library and I'm in the emergency room at UPMC. So I have like all this shit going on and I was like, oh my God, I have to like weed out some of these things. So I quit the job at UPMC and I stayed in the law library because I borrowed their books because I didn't want to pay for them. Now, was books. that already the income that you were starting to make off these these clients? Is that already enough to su to basically supplement what you were doing at the the clerk? Clerking? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, because they didn't pay me. I was just their bitch. Oh, yeah. Oh, literally. <laughs> so, literally. Okay. so I could just stop doing that. Okay. <laughs> that, that, was, that was nice. And uh, I don't know. It just sort of spiraled out of control. And I had to raise my prices to a point where people would stop hiring me. And I called my aunt, who's like my confidant in everything. And I was like, hey, like I'm doing this. Uh, this is paying me this right now. These are the prospective jobs that I could get if I grad, you know, when I graduate in a year. Like, what do you think? And she was like, you should follow, you know, what you want to do. I think you're, if you're asking the question, you're probably more into this than that. And mm. 
and that's probably what you're going to be doing. And I was like, okay. Now at the at at the moment, uh, you're quite known um, among other things for going after people uh, for fraud or lying or misleading or um, you know essentially people in our space that um, are not doing things right. Yeah. And so you have what you do is you go after them. You find the way they lied. You you, you make it public. You you bring it to to people's attention. In my experience with people who do that, something happened to them in the past that made them want to do this. Like, for example, Lane Norton's a good example. He's one of my favorite, great guy. Lane's the man. Loves going after people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was bullied heavily as a kid, terribly. Yeah. And so to me, it's like, okay, I, now I see why you go after people the I way didn't you do. Know that, actually. Oh, yeah. It's because yeah. you were so yeah. terribly bullied. So now it's like, this is me getting back at those bullies, <laughs> but I'm doing it in kind of the righteous way. And I'm, I'm yeah, you yeah. know, doing Did something happen to you? Did, what, what, what was it that made you go, like, oh, this is what I want. I want to go after people? Or was it just. This gets attention, and this is fun. I, I think was it the guilt from when, the eggs when I wrote the book? Yeah, say hey, probably the guilt <laughs> when, from the when eggs. that whole thing happened. Because it was, huh. I was telling a joke online about eating thirty five eggs a day, and people changed their entire fucking what they eat on a daily basis and how they do their life because I said it. And I was like, this is stupid. I don't know. That was that was super huge to me, and um, when I started doing a couple of these videos, I was like, wow, like there's really a lot of fucking terrible people in this industry like there's a ton of good ones don't get me wrong but there's like a lot of people just trying to like make a quick buck get one over on you and would never like the guilt i felt about (laughs) just writing this joke online made me go and like correct it and like write this thing and like kind of get it out there yeah but so uh anybody who works in our space would identify there's a lot of lies it's one of the reasons why we started our podcast wait lane calls them charlatans yes yes. (laughs) we have to use lanes that's i mean there's and this just it's just that i mean uh, most industries uh, have challenges like this but fitness is unique it's just so much i mean 90 percent information that comes out is just it's not true and they capitalize on people's insecurities and it's just it's i I think anybody who works in fitness would, would would admit that but very few people make a career out of going after other people i think the reasons are a, you don't want to tar- put a target on yourself because, yeah. oh, you could go after another, enough people. I know that Lane had a couple experiences like that where people came after him and it was kind of scary. That's one of them. And then the other one is it's just, um, it, you know, making a career exhausting. out of going after people could be exhausting. Yeah. yeah. What's the driver for you? What is it that, why, why focus there? What is the driver behind like that this is where your, your focus, your energy is, is on, uh, you know, um, illuminating the lies or, or calling people out, I should say. It's like a... I don't know. It's like cleaning your own home, right? Like you live there, like you want it to be a nice place. Every dollar I have has come from the fitness industry and it has for a really, really, really long time. And if you see people that are doing the wrong thing or lying or scamming or stealing, like you want to clean your home. So to me, like it's, I don't think it's like a huge undertaking or I like, I wish more people would do it. A lot of people that have their niche, they're like, I want to protect this. Like nobody will. If there's like eight other people that want to do what I'm doing right now, like that'd be pretty cool. Hmm. Is it, you know, less bullshit. It's yeah. exhausting. You're right. It's exhausting. How do you pick the people or do the people message you yeah, and say, yeah. Hey, I got ripped off. Or, yeah, hey, yeah. People I send used you to examples. have to li- always like that's, yeah. I don't scroll that often. Like I, there's a few things that I follow and I have like my own account that mm. it's just like things that I follow that I watch that's pushed to me. But if I get on the main account, it's like look in the DMS, what do I got going on? Like that type of thing. You know, it's purely business that page. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's so hard for me to, you know, the, the level of what I understand, what I know and the details of things that I know is like so small, but the de- the details of what, seven bazillion people, you know, that all send you messages all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like they know stuff. I don't know anything. Where did the skill of actually reach? Cause some of the stuff you dig is pretty wild. Like yeah. I, I'm like, I'm, that was one of the most impressive things. It's like one thing for, I can go through and go, Oh, that's probably Photoshop. Probably. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. I could, I could guess or whatever. But you dive into some stuff where you expose like history. Like, where does that skill come from? Did you law school shout out? Is that what that is? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I just, uh, I just always treat it like, uh, like especially when you're digging into like a story, like an escape room, where you like you hit the end and you're like, okay, you got to go back to the beginning and you just sort of check every option, jiggle every door. Like you're gonna find something. It's you know, uh, there was a girl who faked cancer. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now if you want it. Click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. A girl faked cancer. Her name is wow. Lydia Knoll. Oh my God. Bro. And I got, she was sponsored by a supplement company at the time. They were paying all this money to her, got her laptop. They were helping with her, her online training and shit. 
and it was all bullshit. And the way I figured it out was I, you always kind of have to have like a, an angle, a story. Yeah. And, uh, I family treat her, I background checked her and I found out like who her family members were, found them all on Facebook, sent them a message. Hey, I'm a bodybuilding reporter. I'm doing a story on, on your sister, Lydia. We're so proud of her for persevering through cancer and chemo and training and hitting PR. Could you, you know, give me a, some of your time. We're doing a story on her. And all of her family was like, what the fuck are you talking about? She doesn't have cancer. <laughs> she doesn't have cancer. And I was like, Ooh, Ooh. oh, interesting. Wow. And you just start to, you know, wheel it back from there. And then you look through everything. And I sent her a message like, hey, here's this video I'm about to drop. Her, her page is like everything cancer, right? Like, woe is me shaving her head. There's videos of her shit, which is weird. She's shaving her head multiple times over like two years, like, Shouldn't you only have to do that like once? And why are you shaving a full head? It was just a little bizarre. Mm-hmm. Not always wrong, wrong, right? Like right. some women are like, you know, I want to shave it before it goes. Right, right, right. Totally reasonable. But she does like three times, records it every time, like very strange. And I sent her the video like, hey, this is what I'm going to drop. Like if there's anything that needs to be corrected or if you want to smack me with an oncology report and ruin my life, like, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Here you go. And she sees the video and then goes to her page and just starts deleting everything related to cancer, like everything. And so I'd saved her page. Like I saved all the info and I was able to then edit the end of my video and say, Hey, by the way, guys, I reached out to her. And when I told her what I was doing, she started deleting all the cancer Mm -hmm. shit. So just so you know, wow. Now do you give, do you always give someone the opportunity to try and right the wrong? Like, how do you, how do you handle that? How do you determine? And then also like, how do you determine this is worthy enough to potentially ruin their business or whatever? So generally if they show up on my page, it's like they've already, most of the time, if it's something that's able to be fixed, like they've had an opportunity to, to like fix it. Like uh, there's so many things that I just send a DM to a company like, Hey, you did this, like not cool. Can you just stop being stupid? And a lot of the times they're like, got you. Sounds good. Like really cool. You know, (laughs) sounds good to me because people send me stuff all the time and I couldn't do a story and everything. I don't want to, because sometimes people are just being assholes and like, I've been an asshole. You guys have definitely all been assholes at some point in your life <laughs> nah. and you were wrong and you would Everybody, like an opportunity yeah. to yeah. fix it. So right. like, sure. But her, it's like, yo, you faked cancer. There's no yes. going back. <laughs> like, yeah. That's a, unbelievable. That's man. another level. I didn't even know that one. I didn't see that one. I it, didn't DM what? her for any opportunity to fix it. I DM'd her to torment her because fuck that. Yeah. That's yeah. But if, you know, if she was like, oh, I did it, I did it. I would put that in the video because like, absolutely fuck you. Yeah. Do you, do you think people deserve uh, like a second chance, forgiveness for stuff like this? For most things, yeah, for sure. The child molesters, absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah, you mm-hmm. faking cancer, like no. You're Photoshopping your photos, like no, it's sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure, man. Do you ever give people an opportunity? It's like, okay, look, I yeah. won't post this, but. Yeah, all the time, okay. all the time, all the time. And if they like block me or something, I'm like, all right. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. But Yeah, I think I've seen you post before where you'll give somebody that opportunity to come out clean about, about it. Time. And if you do, yeah. You, then you then you won't say anything. And they the, the Photoshop stories, it's like it's not the end of the world, and it's not. It's like entertaining. It's kind of funny usually. Like it's not a big deal, but it builds the page for when there's something serious that I want to post. Like you know, if there's like a child molester in the fitness world, like I might want to talk about that. Like, well, everybody's following me, watching these funny videos of Photoshop. But if I always posted heavy stories, they wouldn't follow that closely because it's hard to watch. So part is a strategy too. Like how do I grow the page? But then also, so it sounds like you're the biggest thing that you're wanting to focus on. You mentioned child molesters a few times. Yeah. Tell me about that. I mean, there's tons. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but on Instagram, if you're a registered sex offender, you're not allowed to be on the platform. That's an Instagram meta rule. So you can't have a Facebook, can't have an Instagram. If you're on Megan's law or whatever. Yeah. If you're like a registered sex offender, any state. Wow. But Instagram has no way they don't of, track. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it comes to self report. Now I found this out the other like a month ago. And I was like, hmm, interesting. I found the form. And so I did a video and I was like, hey guys, we're gonna go through and just if we have sex offenders, just send them to me and we'll get them off the platform. I'll do a video on it. So many people. So many people in the fitness space too that I've done videos on that are like registered sex offenders. They'll go by, you know, if their name's Jonathan, they'll go by John or Johnny and then no not put their last name. But somebody out there knows that you're a fucking sex offender yeah. and they're going to, you know, send something and whatever. There was a guy named Ray short. He's like an IFBB pro, like just all sorts of crazy shit. All sorts of crazy. Shit. Are you ever worried that you might, um, cause somebody to harm themselves or something bad to happen to somebody because they got, cause there are a lot of shitty people out there. 
Uh, but often these people are damaged and then they get that pressure of like, like, let's say that cancer girl, she only reached so many people, but now she reached way more people knowing she's full of shit. Do you ever think to yourself like, what it's if a choice. Like, somebody hurts themselves? I mean, you know, that's a, that's a choice that she would make if, okay. if she's, you know, not mentally well and does that. It's, yeah. it's not me. It's like maybe you shouldn't fake cancer and gallivant yeah. as all of her clientele were girls going through chemotherapy that's oh, terrible that saw her and said oh my god that's terrible you're squatting you look great what's the juice what's the sauce the secret what is it and she would take money from these girls yeah, terrible going through so like fuck her yeah, yeah. How did, so uh, what uh, kind of back to what sal was asking normally there's something that drives you in this direction like why the pedophile thing too not that I don't disagree with I, going after. I mean, that's a pretty, I was, so, I mean, pretty just easy that? one. I mean, like, nobody likes pedophiles. Yeah. I mean, so you're yeah. just like like the looking at the list of the worst people and you're like, this is easy. Yeah. No, like yeah. I, I don't Let's feel bad about going here. after these people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, I look at it. I'm like, all right, well, there's people that'll listen to me and pay attention. What can I do with this? And it's like, it's the answer is not always like advertise for something that benefits me. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, I don't know fucking this guy has ruined somebody else's life. Why don't you fuck his life up too? Yeah. There was a, a coach that I just had from Australia. He had 2,000 some odd images of child pornography on his device. How did you find out this was already caught, reported? Yeah, well, he did time in 2017. He got sentenced to like whatever, a suspended sentence, mm -hmm. never ended up actually going to jail for it. He was a corrections officer. Somehow got off like extremely easy. So he moves towns, changes his name a little bit, goes into a gym, gets adopted into that gym, starts training at the gym, has women under him that are coaches under him, and nobody talks about it. And somebody sent it to me like, hey, here's oh, this so article. someone else knew they sent it to you. Hey, this yeah, guy's. Yeah. Well, that's it's almost saying. always like yeah, that, right? Yeah. Is There's that right? Somebody, well, think about like somebody you went to high school with, somebody that you went yeah, to college with. Somebody's going to know. That you know did this thing back in 2000, whatever. And then you see them super popular online. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like you really can't just run away from that. So I did a video on this guy. You know, he's, he did this much time. He served zero days in jail for having a bunch of child porn like yeah. you're a sick fuck and there's women that are on it and so i did the video it's like here's you, know, you didn't get punished in the real world you've now created this cool life for yourself but like fuck you you shouldn't be able to have that yeah hmm. you ever worry about someone retaliating on you i know Sal brought up them hurting themselves i'd be more worried that part about part of my brain does not exist oh my god i don't know why i go to every expo i post from at. i post at every gym i don't care like it's i mean that's a bit crazy I mean, dude i feel like that would be the thing that i'd be most worried about because yeah. i mean listen if you if these people are evil enough to fake cancer and take money from people <laughs> and do some of these things i mean What's to stop, and especially if they've built a, a large business off of that and you come in and disrupt the shit out of it, I would be really worried about the retaliating on that side. So you don't even, that, and, and that hasn't happened? You haven't if had anybody try and come after you? No, if it happens, it happens. But it's like, it wouldn't make me stop doing it. Like the thought of that wouldn't make me stop doing mm -hmm. it. And that thought is why a lot of people don't call out bullshit. Right, so you're committed to it. Yeah. Yeah. I think the main reason why people, well, there's two reasons. One is what you said. That's a big one, right? The fear of like people coming after you. I think the other part is that people feel like, well, if I do this, uh, someone might dig up my past yeah. and see some stuff that I did and nobody's perfect. And yeah. you ever think about that? Like, oh shit, what if somebody decided to- I've, I'm just not a demon. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. yeah. You can post the worst shit He's that like, I'm, I'm pretty done. lame. I did a lot of school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've really not yeah. done that much wrong. Yeah. So, <laughs> done the yeah, some, some ex-girlfriend out there like, no, he's a demon. But yeah. like, you know, in the general sense and not that bad of a person. So how do you balance the page with this kind of, you know, pro bono, go after pedophiles, do good for the world with you also have to make money and build a business too. So how does that balance look like for you? Uh, I still coach clients yeah. and I, I have some brand deals with companies that I work with that yeah. will pay me to do it. And it's super cool because a lot of the companies I work with are like, hey, whatever organic way you want to do this shit, here's here's the budget go, which is awesome. Yeah. So like those are really fun. Uh, I usually only take companies that like I fuck with too, yep. which is cool. Cause yep. I have like, you have that choice. Yeah. I like not just say yes to everybody. Uh, that's about, I mean, as far as just making money, like that's it. Instagram pays you views, but it's like nothing. Yeah. So. Now, have they been pretty good about like not shutting you down or, you know, in terms of like people <laughs> Search reporting for me right you now, bro? And, I'm a super shadow band. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, you got to be you? like shadow banned because yeah. people just trying to yeah. complain. mess with you. Yeah, yeah, I get reported all the time. I've been banned like 22 times. Like it's, but you figure out how to get out of, you know, you have to send in the reports and whatever. And uh -huh. it's, it just becomes part of the job, I guess. Do you have like a backup platform and and something else like just in case? Uh, I have uh, things shut down. If you if you type my name into Instagram, there's like five accounts that come up, and there's like a couple of those that have like fifty or sixty thousand on them. But 
other than like not really but I, like i don't know my mindset is okay you could delete the page but you can't delete me yeah like I will do it again. <laughs> like, go ahead. Like, I will do it again. Yeah. It'll be totally fine. As long as I'm alive, I think it'll be okay. Has there been anybody you've gone after that you look back and oh, I could have been yeah. easier on that person? When are you going to go after Epstein? Then? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> Find us his client yeah, list. Please give us the list. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, not really, honestly. Everything I do is, is for a purpose. And if it, you know, if, if I did it, I meant it. And if, mm -hmm. if I did it, it was real. And I wasn't. Who are some of your favorites? You Favorite. mentioned Cancer Girl. That's terrible. Well, Cancer that's Girl was up there. That I tormented her. That was I, I had fun with that one because yeah. I was like, "Fuck you!" Like actually, mm -hmm. like really. My dad died of cancer, and I was like, "So you got a personal yeah, job?" Yeah, like, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that sense. I was I was out to get her for sure. Yeah, like I I never have done that where I torment them and send the DM before I, I told her what time I was going to post the video uh, too. I I think I would have a hard time. Like what I'd have a hard time with is that, and I remember even when we came out, we talked about the shreds guys and stuff like that, and we, I'm sure we were responsible for the the downfall of them <laughs> shut up a um, shop. but <laughs> looking back it, you know i think about like you know this has really always been happening it was it's we're just using a different medium now like magazines and commercials yeah have been photoshopped and edited for as long as we can yeah. remember i mean they've been duping us forever and so now it's it's the same thing just somebody is doing it on a personal level and so i think that's the part that i would probably have like a hard time is like well i mean it's our culture has kind of been fucking doing this for a really, doesn't See, mean it's right that, that used to be a comment that was left on my page all the time oh I yeah always comment i would always reply to it because i was like we need to kill this yeah and, and the answer to that is why would we always do things the same way right. is that how anything gets better yeah it's like well it's always been that way like you know, there's a lot of horrible things in, in society that, that way, happen yeah. where it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, it's always like that. Like, yeah, yeah, we just have to change them and something big has to happen for you to be like, well, maybe we shouldn't edit all this shit. You know, what Airy, uh, they're like a women's clothing company. They mm -hmm. had a huge campaign that did tons of damage in that space of magazines where they're like, we're not touching up anything, editing nothing. What happened the next year? There were three other companies that did the exact same thing. Yeah. Uh, it's like, cool, you yeah. know, oh, wow, mm -hmm. they're not doing it. Well, I guess things can change. Have you seen like some positive stuff like that because you've impacted like either a company or a person? Have you actually seen some really good positive change? Dude, it, every time I go to an expo or something, there's like, it's usually women and they're like, I used to edit my pictures, but like I don't anymore. Part out of fear and part out of like, <laughs> I just realized I don't have to anymore. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you that's, scared the shit out of a bunch cool. of other people. Yeah. How many a day are you getting from like fall? Like you open like today, like are, are every day you're having to open up and look through your DMs and are you getting like that many? Is it that many out there? Yeah. There's, I mean, there's, think about how many Instagram accounts there are and like people in the fitness space. It's like huge. So then how do you determine which one you're going to do and not do? Like how is it, how does like, if you got six in there right now, you only got time for two or three of them. <laughs> so there's actually some strategy to it. Okay. You have to be balanced and you have to, uh, you have to like consider like, what does this look like from somebody that doesn't know me and doesn't know my heart? You know, if there's like 18 women that have been sent to me in a row that are like popular fitness accounts that are all of like, you know, like bikini bodybuilders. If I do 18 of those in a row, even though it just is what came across my desk, do I look like a fucking incel hater? Hmm. The answer is yes. Hmm. So you got to splice it up. If I get a man photoshopping, which is pretty rare, if you're a man and on my page, you're probably a fucking child molester or something worse. Like usually the men are doing the demon shit. I'm like, man, Photoshop, run it right now. Like if somebody DMs me, I have right away, right away. But if it's a, it's like, all right, <sighs> bikini bodybuilder, Photoshopping your photos. It's so common. Back of the list. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, so common. There. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Tell us about the charities and stuff that you you work with. Um, I mean, we did a giant toy drive this last year with uh, strong New York, which was cool. I kind of pissed off the owner of the gym. I didn't really tell him that we were doing it, and I made a video and posted the address. He got mad? <laughs> well, because it's, it's probably tons of people were so dropping we live, toys off. Yeah, but I still think that would be great promo for you. When you I mean, think about it. Someone did that to mad. us, and like toys are showing up uh, here every day. I mean, that's what I'm confused, but you're not going to be was, mad. <laughs> so we live, it's in New York City, right? This is on the fifth floor. It's like a small little gym, and there's an entryway with an elevator type of situation. Okay. And I put the thing out on like a Thursday and I was like, Hey guys, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so the, you know, the mail, right? Like Thursday, Friday, Monday comes around and he's calling me. He's like, John, we can't get into the gym. Why is your name on all these fucking packages? 
And I was like, oh, yeah, like, I posted a toy drive thing. Like, he's like, is this going to keep happening? I was like, yeah, probably. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was really successful. But this is actually what I think this was the, one of the first things that really caught my attention with you. I, I mean, I was already probably watching the clips. But part of what made me reach out to you was we've talked forever and we just haven't got around to doing like some sort of a, a cool drive like that. And I, it was Dude, uber it's successful, so easy, and it, it was really so, successful, right? Like, yeah. talk about how, like, how much, uh, what, what you guys did. So, well, the hard part is finding the families and finding like a big network of people to show up and get the like. You guys could get the, the toys, I promise you. Like, you just throw yeah. it out there, like thousands show up. It's insane. But then just networking with, you know, somebody to bring food or, or like organization, getting a Santa Claus to show up, that type of thing, and then wrapping all that shit is a giant pain in the ass. But I mean, we had three hundred some families show up. That's cool. Which was like ridiculous. It was nonstop from the time we opened to the time like the it was closing. Yeah. It was just insane. So you had him come to the gym. Did you guys have a Santa Claus there? Yeah. And then yeah. you guys had we like, had a Russian Santa Claus. He was he was dope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He was great. He showed up. Uh we catered it with uh there was like a pizza spot at the on the first floor and we were like, Hey, like can we buy uh, a ton of pizza tomorrow <laughs> and they were like no i don't think so i was like please and so they did plans to do that this year again or what's it what's yeah it? we're trying to do it bigger and better same place or you're gonna have to go somewhere a little bit bigger uh our big hang up last year was just the space it wasn't big it's not like it's a gym but it's like it's like as big as your guys kind of lobby situation okay. so it's like not enough for 300 people to be there yeah there's a stairwell that goes up and there were like when we opened, I, I like we had everything set up and I was like, all right, let me see if anybody's here yet. And I opened the door and it was like everybody in the lobby. And then they were filtered down the stairs, like all five floors. Wow. I was waiting wow. to get in. It was insane. What was the motivation for, for that, for the toy drive? Well, it took me two minutes to record the video and it helped hundreds of people. So it was just very easy. Yeah, but still there's a motivation to want to do that, right? It, you, you, you talked about where you grew up, where you just, it was just something like, oh, you know, I, when I grew up, it was tough. Yeah, it's poor me. as hell. <laughs> well, okay, so talk about that. So that may, that sounds like a pretty strong motivation. So uh, I, I, I don't know. It's like if you can do something small and help people, like why not do it? Like it was literally no effort at all. It made me mad actually because I posted this video and I was like, I'm I should have done this before. Well, no, no, because like my page at the time, I only had like maybe 150,000 or something on there. Like it, it was way less than I have now. And I was like, damn, I could post this and all this shit shows up. And these motherfuckers aren't doing that. Like, why? It's yeah. so easy. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was just so easy. What's the end? Uh, the like the the end game or future for kind of what you're doing? Do you want to continue? Because you're getting kicked off Instagram. People are going to complain or whatever. Are you thinking? Okay, I'm going to move in a different direction, different platform, grow this in a different way. I'm just going to disappear one day, bro. Really? Do you? Yeah. Like, they're going to be like, "Fuck all the Photoshop." That's, that's like, that's like right you know, that's funny. Yeah. Boy, Juju. That's how he is, dude. John John <laughs> yeah. Call's going to like that one day. One day, no one's going to see him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll yeah. be gone, and they're going to be like, "Damn, Photoshop's back. All the scammers are here. There's pedophiles on Instagram. Where's oh, John at?" Uh, <laughs> so tell me a little <laughs> bit about a bad signal. <laughs> I'm curious about your childhood. I mean, you've kind of just brushed over it. Like the fact that you grew up poor, uh, you lost your dad. Tell me about your home life. You got uh, brothers and sisters. How did you grow up? What was I have that a, like? I have a brother. We grew up in West Virginia. Okay. Uh, Chester, world's largest teapot. Shout out. You guys have heard of it. Yeah, obviously. Because you told us earlier. Uh, <laughs> so meaning so you've you. heard of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Just uh, grew up in West Virginia, man. It's uh, <laughs> that's the that's the summary. Uh, I mean, gamer. You said right. Were you close to? Your, are you close to your brother? Or are you like? What's the age difference? He's a year older than me. He's a year yeah, older. He's still in West Virginia. He he. I actually forced him to go to law school. So he's an attorney. Oh wow! So both of you guys went that direction. Yeah. He okay. So what? Okay. You come from not very much, obviously. Yeah. Oh, there's a what, is the drive? Look at that, huh? <laughs> All right. Well, the is the drive to become a lawyer a financial thing? What's the like? What's the motivation of even trying to become a lawyer? I mean, our family sucked, so I was like, man, we can't. <laughs> you know, nobody went to college. Like none of that. I was like, we can't suck, so we have to. And you thought better. lawyer because it's a it's a yeah. esteemed position, yeah. good, yeah. Yeah, good, good income. It, I've always thought it was super interesting. Were you academically? Um, I mean, did you do act well academically as a kid growing up, or did you just decide lawyer and then turn it on? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a great studier, as mentioned. That I was writing a book about 35 yeah. eggs a day while I was supposed to be doing my finals, but I've always done well in school. Just I'm not the most studious person. Yeah, okay. or very responsible with that. And so you grew up. What mom and dad were together the whole time. Yeah. And then, how old were you when your dad got sick? Uh, twelve. Oh, you
oh, <laughs> through, <laughs> through alcohol. Oh man, mm. yeah, he likes was to it, drink. Was it a t- okay? So you had a tough child coming up. Even tough childhood alcoholism played a role. I mean, no, my dad was fucking savage. Like he had cancer and like was going through chemo. He worked at a, a drywall plant and mm-hmm. a copper plant before that. And he would still go to work. I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Like mm. he would just drive to work. He he had a Goldwing motorcycle. Oh He'd yeah, ride that shit to work. Like, dude, you have cancer. What the fuck's wrong with you? Wow. So and he got he got it at twelve, and then when did he pass? Uh, when I was seventeen. So oh, so he fought it on and off yeah, for five a years. Yeah. For five years. And then after that, it was just, that's it. It was mom and you and your brother. And then my mom had died the prior year to Whoa. him dying. So she died when I was 16. She had a heart attack. Bro, oh, man. Wow. Bro, yeah. bro, you had a crazy childhood. How <laughs> you just like downplaying, down, downplaying the, the shit out of it, dude. Yeah, like, it's dude. not that crazy. Yeah, dude. It's that. Did and you now, feel, did you feel at any, because a lot of things are making sense right now. Did yeah, you yeah. feel at any point like, uh, life's dealing me a shit hand and I'm going to go out and make a difference? Or did you feel like I got to do something? Or like, how do you, how does a kid deal with that? Because that's hard, man. Your, your mom dies, heart attack, random. Yeah. Dad gets cancer at 12, is fighting it the whole time. And I know people, I've known people in my life to, to battle cancer for that long. And it's not like, yeah, I'm kind of, it's like, oh, almost going to die. No, I'm not. Oh, almost going to die. Yeah. No, I'm not. So it's really, really, really traumatic and stressful oftentimes. How do you cope and deal with that growing up? I mean, I don't, it's like, you can't change it. And like, so worrying, like, it's like, I don't know. It's like, like, what do I do now? Yeah. It's kind of it. Like, what do I do? My aunt who I've, I spoke about a little earlier. It sounds like you were close with her then. Yeah. Well, I was, I was 17 at the time, so I couldn't be on my own. So she like, I'd, I'd never met her actually up until this point ever. Oh, really? <laughs> and so she like fly, cause it was, you know, Christmas cards and stuff, yeah. and, like birthday, whatever. And she like flies in. Is this dad's like, sister or mom's sister? Mom's sister. Mom's sister. Yeah. Dad's sister's a horrible person. Okay. We'll talk about that later if you okay. want to. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. All right. But uh, yeah, she flew in and she was like, yeah, you're uh, mine now. Mm. <laughs> and she's awesome. She's a super sweet lady. She, uh, she's a hairdresser in Los Angeles, California. So you moved to LA? Yeah. Oh, what was that move like from West Virginia I mean, to LA? You know, Chester, West Virginia, Los Angeles, California, like very similar cultures. So, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so right. Yeah. I mean, the maybe, world's largest teapot. Maybe the two oh, opposite ends of the spectrum as far <laughs> yeah. as you could get from I that. I was like, what the fuck? Like, there was like 110 kids in my high school, and I got to LA and I went to Westchester High, which is like. Was it senior year of high school? Yeah. So, yeah. brand new kid, West yeah. Virginia. Uh, gamer, you're not even working out at this point. A little bit. Uh, I was like not. Obs- no, no, no. I wasn't working out. Okay. I was a uh, chubby into- kid. Were you like a chubby gamer? I was into bicycles. Okay. I was into fixed gear bikes. Okay. Okay. You know what fixed gears are. Yeah. Like your BMX bike. Yeah. BMX. No, 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 no. Fix. It's like a track bike. So there's no freewheel. It's super cool. It's like a thing in LA. It was like a, a part of the culture. At oh, the okay. Time, which is cool because I was already into it. Hmm. But uh, it's like these people like go on bike rides and they like get fucking hammered and drive around the city at like wow. 3 a.m. Okay. <laughs> so me, 17, showed up. I was like, oh, yeah, this sounds great. Uh, did you get uh, Did you get fit right in? Did you get picked on? No. It was, I mean, it was it was kind of funny. I was there for like two weeks and I can – do you know what Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles Yeah, is? of yes. course we do. Yes. So yes. I had never <laughs> been. And I found out that a lot of the kids in my class had never been. And I convinced them all to like basically go with me to the hood <laughs> mm. <laughs> to go. Like there's a couple Roscoe's chicken and waffles and there's one that's like deep, like far away from where we lived. And I was like, let's go on a road trip. And like they just all went with me for God knows what reason. And you guys was, made it back okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's totally fine. It was delicious. It was absolutely delicious. So it was an easy transition to go yeah. from there to LA. You made friends. Everything was fine. Yeah, this yeah. is like the reverse version of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You did the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> John, how old are you right now? How old are you? 33. 33. Have, uh, did you go to any therapy or anything at all? Have you ever tried to like work through what this thing that you don't think is traumatic that happened in your life? Like, did you ever? Not really. Really? Uh, I remember uh, my dad was like, let's go to therapy. And like, he wanted to go. And I was like, okay, I'll go with you, dad. And I went like to go with him. Yeah. But it was like for him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he just lost his wife. So you don't, you don't feel that any of that stuff, you sound so like Justin Harry, you just like, <laughs> yeah, just stuff I, it. Yeah, yeah, just stuff I know, it. I know. Yeah, like, I yeah I'm, I'm sure. fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of funny how guys like that are strong, really strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's where it all comes out Mental inside the gym. Toughness. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, you you do not think that yeah. some of that stuff down there is driving some of the things that you do. Like, is, is maybe all the stuff that you do 
at everybody else to keep the the light off of you. Like I don't no one don't ask about me. Don't ask about my childhood. Don't like, <laughs> or I like, feel like I'm taking out these bad people and it's making me feel like I got purpose and you know it could be a yeah, lot. But of like things. I don't feel like anything bad has ever been done to me. So like yeah. not really. Like it's just the hand you're dealt, and like you just have to kind of deal with. That's it. That's a very logical way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Nobody that's did not, it to me. <laughs> it's yeah. like no, you're no, it's, saying. It, listen, it's yeah. a very logical way of thinking, and I get that because I can be like that very much. Like, well, yeah. this is just what happened. Yeah. This is how. You, but it's not a feeling way. It's early access to Black Friday. All maps, programs, all bundles, sixty percent off. Also, if you get a bundle, you'll get ten entries to win. If you buy a program, you'll get five entries to win. Everything else, one entry to win. Five days at the Mind Pump House in Park City. It's got a gym. It's got a cold dip. It's got a sauna. It's got red light therapy. It's all kinds of great stuff. Five-day vacation hooked up with $1,000 for travel accommodations as well. Early access Black Friday. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code Black Friday for the 60% off and the entries to win uh, a vacation at the Mind Pump Park City House. All right, back to the show. But like, think about Batman. It's like, yo, somebody shot your mom and dad yeah. at a fair where yeah. you're supposed to have fun. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, of course you be a superhuman yeah. and go stop bad guys. So you want to be Batman. So you, no, yeah. but I'm saying, I'm saying like nothing bad. <laughs> sure I didn't have sense. a Batman moment. It was like, oh, fuck. That yeah, but it. you don't, you don't have, and I get what you're saying because I, I think I had a very similar thought process around my child. Like I never complained about how mm. I grew up. I just say hey, it was the hand I was dealt. Yeah. And in fact, I say a lot of things about like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. It went that way. Cause it turned me into the person. I like, have a sense of pride of it. Cause it's like, there's so many people that suck and yeah. had like awesome starts. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yo, you, I was on hard mode, sir. You, you were not <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it's, it's sort of like a, yeah. What is your take me. on that? I mean, there's, we do kind of live in this kind of uh, entitlement victimhood is a popular thing. Does that bother you when you hear people that are like that or like, or, or do you, or you have empathy for them? Like, how are you with, when it I comes think to stuff like that? People are at a significant disadvantage when they have a leg up. Cause like, you don't know what's hard. Why well, is that's, yeah. this is what I made this argument the other day about like, everybody thinks that coming and, but this always pisses, this will piss people off for sure that coming from privilege is actually the advantage. And I say that- I think it's a disadvantage. I think it's a disadvantage. Well, because your tolerance for bullshit is extraordinarily low. Like I I used to be really good friends with this extremely wealthy person and any small like grain of sand in their day would ruin their day. It would be like normal shit or like things that would be, it would be like your best day. Like they went to Louis Vuitton and they didn't have the backpack that they wanted. Like that's great. You were in Louis Vuitton, able to make a purchase, but it ruined your day because you or the gym was closed today. Just like small little things set them to a point where they couldn't function. And it's like, damn. Uh, the variable that's missing is mindset. Yeah. Because statistically speaking, if you look at you know disadvantage over advantage, statistically speaking, disadvantage, more likely to commit crime, more likely to be in jail, more likely to be drug addicted. But then you have these outliers that just, it's like, how, why? How did that person come out of that, not just come out of that, but come out of that with tremendous success. And the variable that people, and then of course you got people who grew up with all opportunities and they end up uh, you know, completely squandering it and becoming just dirt bags or losers or deadbeats or whatever. What's the variable? What's where's the, what's the X factor? This is, this is mindset. Mindset yeah. is a big uh, X factor that's happening uh, with something like that. Were there external things though that motivated? Cause I, I remember like when I go back here and I, and I do this exercise of like trying to figure out, okay, what was it? Like, you know, why, why did I have a mindset similar to you? I thought, I mean, I saw other people that, cause in my, the, my family we were raised that like money was evil and it was all bad. <laughs> like it was bad to have money. Right. And so I started to see people uh, that were really successful, that were mm-hmm. really good people. And I thought, man, I, I don't, I don't mm-hmm. like where I'm at. I, I want that. And the stuff that my parents were saying doesn't seem to line up. And so I had something to look at and go, okay, like I'm going to go figure this out for myself. Like, did you have like anything external like that, either a person or something that you saw that made you go like, I, I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to go do this. I, I don't want this for my life. Like definitely my aunt, honestly. Yeah. Cause mm-hmm. I mean, I grew up in like, it's not a lot and she's extremely successful, like small business owner mm-hmm. has had a very large salon at the time and just meeting her and like knowing that she was a member of my family was like kind of cool. And my uncle's also really dope that lives in, California, he like manages a bunch of metal bands, like a bunch of motorhead bands and well, stuff. Yeah. And I, I remember meeting him for the first time. His name's Tom Vitorino. 
Mm. He is a. He also is in a Bruce Springsteen cover band that tours in Japan. Wow, <laughs> he's cool as fuck. It's like so just, that's he, Justin's, that's he's Justin's so secret cool. dream right there. Dude. <laughs> you guys just become best friends. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. We just become best friends. So I'm like 17. My parents just died. I fly out to LA. I meet this woman for the first time, and she's like, "I'm gonna introduce you to your uncle." And drives me to his, he just bought this mansion in like Gardena Hills, which I didn't know what the fuck that meant. And it's like rich people place. Mm -hmm. He just bought a, the new Corvette had just came out the C six or whatever it was. And he just bought one. And it's like, I'm there for five minutes. And he's like, Hey kid, want to go out for a ride? And I was like, sure. And he has like this Batman black brand new Z06 Corvette. It is like, right. And we're going, he's like, yeah, I'm also like a race car driver. <laughs> like he's telling me like his whole discography of what he does. He like races cars in the track. And I was just like, damn, my family doesn't suck. Like maybe I could do something. Maybe I could do something cool. But just like seeing that and like understanding that there were people in my yeah. family that weren't, you know, just slaving away. And wow. What a turning point. It was you, cool. You, do you, um, do you really want to make them proud? I suppose. I don't want to make me proud. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What do you mean? My aunt's proud of me. She's just yeah. Like, oh, so, yeah. So, I mean, because for, for someone to do that, take care of you, she didn't know you. It's like yeah. a big deal, especially as a kid. She's got to be She's got to be stoked to see where you're at in your life right yeah. now. To know no, that. She was huge. I mean, like, think. She was, she's like, she was like 55 at the time. Or, or no, she was 50. She had a four-year-old son, Jack, and she like this is teenager that she's never met like move yeah. into my house who the fuck does that yeah right nobody's mm -hmm. doing like i would not have blamed her if she was like fuck off go to the you know, right i would i would go to a foster home for like six months yeah. turn 18 go figure my shit out but she was like fly in i showed up i'd never met this woman before she's like we got to get you a car and i was like no like i can ride a bicycle she's like no you're a fucking adult you need a car i was like okay and she bought me a volkswagen golf like i, I was like who the fuck is this lady never met her before and she's just like buying me a car. It was insane. Now, when you moved in, you got all this. Were you thinking like, I want to be like the perfect kid. I want to be the perfect kid for these people. They're taking care of me. They're, or were you more rebellious? Like I was a fucked in the head, 17 year old degenerate. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck was going on. I mean, what? I, I yeah. Cause yeah. a lot of times what, when you read about this, what like kid will go two different ways. One, which is more rare is I just want to be perfect. The other one is, do you really love me? Let me see if you love me now. Let me see if you love me now. Let me see if you love me now. And they just keep doing shit to test without realizing that's what they're doing. I was like super, like I would never be home and I would be like out till like five in the morning and like just, she like didn't see me for like months. And she'd be like, she, I remember when she was like, John, are you like, where are you? <laughs> like, are you okay? Like I'd never see you. And I was like, oh yeah. I'm assuming good. that they probably gave you a lot of freedom and latitude. Yeah. I mean, you're almost 18. You just came from what you came from. Yeah. So she's probably not trying to, they were perfect. control you. They just, they gave you your space. I would do dumb shit and they were like, understand, understand. Wow. Yeah. That's wow. great. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, okay. Yeah. And I feel like we're finally getting to like some of this motivation. I feel like this is, uh, at least I would be this way. Like the fact that you, you recognize you're a bit of a dumb shit. Uh, they still took you on the wing. She handed you, she's this great person. I would think that that would be a big driving factor of like, what would motivate me to be successful and to like show that like, Hey, it was worth taking care of me or yeah. helping me out. No, for sure. Uh, yeah. So what, uh, at what point did you tip over from, uh, considering yourself uh, somebody poor and to like, I've made it. I've now I'm, I'm doing I things. I still feel poor. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. yeah kind of. Really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just the internet, you know, everything's not real. Yeah, it's I mean, true it's like the internet's not real man true. Do you, you got an nft house and all that dude <laughs> fucking somebody uh i i, I put a thing up like a q a i usually do it when i'm traveling because it's like fun to sit there and somebody's like do you fly private ever or, or why are you in? i'm like who do you think i am <laughs> I'm fucking dude bro. <laughs> there is a there is a big uh, uh like misconception around just because you have a you know you a ton of followers <laughs> yeah, and you're yeah, automatically yeah. filthy yeah, rich i know a lot of those people they're not <laughs> like uh, yeah I've, I've just really not made it my thing to milk my followers for every dollar that they have you know yeah. some people for sure they do do that but not me. So what's the plan? What's the vision then? If you still don't feel like and you, you want to disappear, like yeah, what you, you haven't arrived. Yeah, what's what is the plan? Um, the plan is I don't know, man. Keep doing what I'm doing and find something that I love. And I've already found that I think I, I just love doing it. There's no like I don't think about tomorrow or a week from now. It's like you ever thought about going into because uh, media and journalism is so different now. It used to be like major networks, but now you've got a lot of rogue kind of independent. <laughs> 
yeah. journalists who go out and investigate shit. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you got that skill. I know. You're just focused on the sure. fitness industry. But you ever think about going big dogs like big pharma? You know, uh, you know, lobbyists like politicians. Epstein. Yeah, yeah I, I that's when you need. That. By the way, you need to hide. Yeah. By yeah. the way, so that's when the shit starts coming after you. Just yeah. warn you. <laughs> yeah, they'll kill me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. <laughs> you ever think about that? Like maybe I'll just go. Like I'm gonna be like this is what I like doing. I'm gonna investigate and be a journalist and make this happen. I love I love that shit. It's just uh, I don't know if I'm there yet. I would I would need like a team. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just me. Like I don't have anybody. But there. you love it. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. I mean it's it's smaller. It's 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 manageable. Like that's mm -hmm. a huge production and like a big undertaking. And do, do you at one point, you have a girlfriend? Mm -hmm. Did you at one point want to get married, have kids, family? Uh, because of circumstances we've talked, like marriage isn't that important to me. Okay. Yeah. But if it's important to my partner, then it's important to me. Yeah. So like, it's not something I really think about. Yeah. I'm not like, oh, I can't wait. To well, that makes sense because. Uh, it's like, who the fuck is going to come to my wedding? <laughs> well, the, the, the reason why that makes sense is because if you're like, I'm going to have like the kids and a family, you'd be more f afraid of the kind of investigative journalism type stuff. Yeah. But your, your future is kind of like, let's see what happens. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. That, you know, about I don't that. know. I think it's, it's all about like, what can you give to the world? Mm -hmm. It's not like, how can I make this great for me? It's like, what's your big, what do you want your big contribution to be? I mean, right now you're, you're outing people in the fitness space yeah, and, I mean, the truth, and, and, just, and, and, and child molesters and, and pedophiles on, online type of deal. What, what, what do you want your big contribution to be? I, I love what I'm doing now where there's like a ton of different things that I could say like, man, I did that. Mm -hmm. You know, like last year, 350 kids had a Christmas because yeah. I did something like that. Super rewarding. Yeah. That shit's cool That's to cool. me. Yeah. Just being able to say that like a hundred times is awesome. Like, So more of that. Yeah. Way more of that. Who, who, what has been your experience like going, because you've been to quite a few expos now, right? Yeah. What has been your experience meeting other fitness people like ourselves and stuff like that? Like, are you surprised most of the time by what they're like in person and who they are? Or are you pleasantly surprised? Are you let down? Like what has been like your journey of meeting other fitness people? Uh, sometimes they're like weirdos that can't turn it off. Like there's some that like, it's like dude, I just want to have a conversation with you. And they're yeah. like filming and shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it, it's a podcast that makes sense. Right. But like there's some people you meet them and it's like just shooting the shit. And you look to your right and like, their mic is on. <laughs> their, yeah. their lapel mic is on, and their dudes filming. Yeah, they're still they're still a they're character. in character, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's a lot of that. What are you doing, man? <laughs> like, so I feel like there's more of that than the other. I mean, I we our experience has been like that. You it's meet rare somebody, that we meet a real person. mainly YouTubers. Yeah, yeah it's for sure. Yeah, you yeah, meet them in like there. Everything isn't content, bro. Like live your life. Because I go to these. Like I've been going to these expos since 2014. I've been going to the Arnold. And like, I like to go as a fan of the thing. And like, I want to stand in the lines and like meet the people and stuff. And it's like, I don't, like, I don't want to be filming stuff. Like yeah. I'm there to like mm -hmm. enjoy it. And it's hard yeah. to do if you were like, Hey, let me interview you about this. Who are you, who are you a fan of in the space? What do you mean? Like, like who do you, you said, like? Like, like you're getting in line to meet oh, people. Like who I are mean, you fan? Who are you? Rest like? in peace. Rich Payana always stood in his line. Never okay. got to the end. Okay. Oh no. Never got to the end. <laughs> it was, uh, uh, Seth Ferrosi, of course. Okay. Which is, I have a cool story about Seth. Sure. Tell so him. like, I know him now, but I was always a fan of him. I don't know if you know, he's like, a, he was a bodybuilder. Like, yes. Went pro Europa, disappeared. He had some health problems. And then I'm at the Arnold in like 2015 and he's there like working a booth. And I was like, holy shit, Seth Ferrosi. Like, what are you doing here? Nobody's in his line. Nobody knows who he is. He's just like working the booth. And I bought one. He had, he was selling his t-shirts like under the booth and the mm. AAR t-shirts. So I bought one. And then like the next year I come back and I'm like, all right, where the fuck is Seth at? I go to the Primeval Labs booth. He's not there. He has his own fucking booth because AAR popped off that year. And I was like, shit, I waited like two hours to go say hi to him and get a picture with him again. Like, that's kind of cool. <laughs> and yeah, there's are there some of your favorites. Yeah. I mean, you know, Steve Cook. Like, okay. Nowadays, like I go, you go to those things and it's like there's 18 YouTubers that yeah. are like the thing. And I'm like, I don't know who these guys are. Yeah. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. You've met Steve. You've met Andy too. I see you're rocking first form. Like, you've, course, you've, yeah. like, did you do Andy's show? Did you get on it? No, no, no. You have yet, that show. No, you yeah. just know him. I want to. How did that relationship, did he reach out to you because of the stuff that you were doing or how did you guys get connected? So I did a, a big call out on first form. Oh, but Andy's a savage and was like, let's fix this shit. Sent out contracts to everybody, made them sign a Photoshop goob clause and kept it fucking pushing. Oh shit. Oh, okay. Andy, I, didn't, dude, I, I didn't know that. Andy's a savage. The, the toy drive we were just talking about. Yeah. Like he reaches out to me. He's like, yo bro, how can I help? And at this time, like I'm walking into the fucking gym every day. Cannot walk into the gym. There are too many fucking toys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, we're good. <laughs> and he's like, no, how can I help? 
And I was like, we're good. We have enough. And he's like, no, <laughs> what do you need? And he's like, I'm going to send you a check. I was like, motherfucker. Sends it. So we like, he sends me this check and I was like, what did we end up going to like Macy's filling up? It was stupid. It was dumb. Like it was every kid left with like six toys and we had nearly a thousand left over that we donated to a women's shelter afterwards. So this is kind of cool story. You call out Andy Versella for some first form people, Photoshopping. which I, I, to defend him in this situation, they probably have thousands of thousands, thousands yeah. of yeah. kids, I mean, how can you control? Thousands. right. That are affiliated with their brand. That, yeah. Right. And so probably an honest, like shit. Yeah. I didn't know. Well, yeah. I was, so like I watch your show, I watch his show. Like I've always been a fan of his stuff. Yeah. And I was like, damn, this is hard. Cause he's like one of my heroes, but like, I have to do this. Mm because he's the dude that'll crack heads and then everybody will look and be like, oh, First Form did sure. it? We have to do it too. I've been sent so many Photoshop clauses from other brands Wow, that they've put in because they're like- Because of that. Oh, wow, you've made a big impact there. Yeah, yeah. crazy. <laughs> like, and I mean, sometimes you have to go after the you know that type of thing. You know, If I was like, oh man, I'm a fan of Andy. I'll just let this one go. It's like, does that help me? I guess on a personal level, like, yeah, maybe. Like, maybe you want to make him like me more or something like that. But like, no. It's it doesn't help the it industry. It sounds like he did the right thing. Yeah, dude, he's it speaks man. volumes about his character, right? Mm -hmm. You call him out on some shit, which definitely hurts, makes him look bad. Yeah. He takes it. He takes I it on the too. takes it on like yeah. on the chin. Oh, you were too. You were yeah. hard, huh? It's it hurt me because I'm like a fan of this guy, <laughs> and I was like, fuck. <sighs> okay, <laughs> let's welcome to the show. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad, but he, I mean, he crushed it, man. He there's a very short list of people that I've done videos on that like haven't blocked me or have even like acknowledged the thing. You know, usually they're like, turn all the comments off, lay low, wait two weeks. He was like, nah, he got my phone number within like five minutes of me posting the video. <laughs> Cause he knows fucking everybody. So how's that? Tell me how that phone call goes. So he literally, I didn't answer. He left me a voicemail and I was like, oh, I can't cause my, my policy is usually like front facing, like outward. Like I don't want to, uh, I don't want to have these personal side conversations. It's just like, here's the thing. Here's what's wrong. Just fix it. And that's, he's, he's like, fuck, got it. Killed it. That's, is that how, so when that you, he leaves, or you put it out there and then did you demand or say anything? No, that's you, the thing. Like I just criticized. I was like, here's this athlete doing the whatever. And he, he like somehow got all these contracts out of these people, made them all sign it with like in a week. Like all their, their whole team was like, oh, fuck, we're on notice. He got it. Like it was crazy. Wow. Was That's crazy. great. And then any follow up after that? Did you guys, I mean, because I think you've talked to him since then, haven't you? We're homies, man. Yeah. I, <laughs> I talk to him every day. Yeah. yeah. So how does that <laughs> unfold? So, I mean, because you, you, at one point there, you, you have the, okay, this guy's a guy I really like. I hate to do this. I feel bad. Yeah. There's got to be a party that's going like, I hope he does the right thing or I hope this Dude, doesn't ruin. I was so happy when like I got the word that like all these contracts and shit were going on and I saw it. I was like, this is cool. And so like, a year went by and it was like this awkward, like, man, I fucking love it. Like I still watch his show and shit. It's like, man, this guy probably fucking hates me. And I'm at natural body in, um, Queens, which is, a, it's like a supplement store. They're a huge first form company. They, they're like one of the first people that ever started carrying his stuff or whatever. Like they were long time first form brand supplement store. And they have a block party once a year. And I got invited to it to go with flavor gang or one of my friend's companies. And I'm there and this dude comes up to me and he's got a, uh, are you guys watch guys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The guy with the sky dwellers is a watch guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a Panerai Carbotech, the carbon fiber one. Yeah. And I was like, yo bro, that watch is cool. And we start talking about watches and blah, blah, blah. And like 15 minutes goes by and he's like, do you know who I am? And I was like, no, I was like, John. And he's like, Sal Frisella. And I was like, oh, you probably hate me. And he's like, no, actually you helped our brand. And I was like, I love that. I love that. And he's like, let me get your number. And we talked about, do you guys know what Microtech is? Mm. It's like a knife company. Okay. okay. It's very niche, like okay. super niche. And as it somehow, like Sal knew that I was into Microtechs, somehow they convinced Microtech to do a collaboration with them, which Microtech works with like nobody. Like they don't usually do this with brands. Mm. And they made all these like custom Microtech first form knives. And he's like, hey man, listen, like give me your address. I want to send you a knife. And I was like, okay. And in, the, in my mind, I was like, is this like a threat? <laughs> You're sending me a knife. What's sending going a knife on? With a finger. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like the horse head. No! <laughs> so you he, stab yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so we have like a really cool conversation. Uh, and uh, I go home and he ends up, he sends me like overnights a knife and with a really nice note in there. And then a few days later, Andy calls me 
and I like had his number saved on my phone and I was like, Oh no. Do I pick up? Did you pick up? Yeah, of course. I I picked up and we talked for like an hour and just like everything that we're saying here is sort of like a conversation. Like, dude, that was hard. And he's like, yeah. And he, like, he watched my, like he watches my stuff too. He's like, dude, you do good work. Like it sucked. He's like, but, but we had to get through it. <laughs> and I was mm. like, yeah. Says a lot about someone like that. Yeah. Integrity, cool. bro. Yeah. Integrity. That yeah. says a lot. So when did, uh, uh, I'm assuming that you have a partnership with him now. Do you yeah. have a partner? Oh, you didn't, you don't no. have a sponsorship. No. Oh, you should have a sponsorship. I with fuck him. with the brand. <laughs> I don't I, need a sponsorship. I mean, yeah. Okay. I, I, I mean, like things that I like. Yeah. But I mean, it's like you, you also are running a business now and taking on partnerships. Yeah. You may as well fuck with a partner who you like and get paid and win. Yeah. It's a win-win all the way around. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, but, but sometimes it's like, yo man, that's my guy. <laughs> I know? mean, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, that matters more. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I, mean, I post their shit all the time and, People, they always, are you sponsored? Like, nah, <laughs> I'm not. Which I mean, again, just shows even even more brilliance on Andy's part. I mean, look, he took it on the chain like that. And then look, you're doing all this free promo now for them too and not even have to pay, which is like uh, just yeah. by being a good guy, you know? I mean, they Andy's done so much. For me. I misread him early too. He's done a lot for me. Bro. Early on early on in the on the podcast, when I, it was right after Shreds went down, they were like the next brand that popped up. Yeah. And very similar affiliate marketing. And People so- People were, so it's like- I, like I joke with them, I'm like, bro, you have a cult, but it's like they have a crazy culture. Yeah. I went to uh, Summer Smash this, this year. Big party, dude. It was so cool. It's like, it's the kind of place where I'm looking around and there's like thousands of people there, all sorts of shit going on. And I'm like, after this parking lot is cleared, there's not going to be a single fucking piece of trash in the ground. That's like the kind of people that they are. Mm. Like everybody is just like bought in on point they don't want to fuck it up they don't want to have a bad reputation for the brand like they just care everybody is so into the brand it's cool mm. like yeah some people would look at it and be like that's a cult but it's like no it's a culture it's really good culture mm. yeah and that's super hard to do especially on a mass scale yes. with a ton of fucking people yeah because there's bad apples but it's of like of course damn there's really it's really hard to find one there it's yeah. really 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 hard i know to I'm, find. i misread them because they came out right after shreds and they were the next big affiliate marketing supplement <laughs> brand right afterwards and then i had somebody who i knew who was saying like oh he's not that we're talking shit about him not knowing who he was yeah. and shame on me for assuming because later on and also listening to his stuff we ended up connecting and like I talk to him on a regular basis now and really like him and really like a lot of the stuff that he puts he's out and he savage, does. Bro. And you can tell he's they've built an incredible culture and team there. And you're right, when you got thousands of people technically that are working underneath you, it's like you can't control every behavior no. all of doing. But what you can do as a leader is like react to it the right is way. Right, is respond, take it on the chin and be like, yeah. Hey, how do we keep this from happening next time and keep it moving? Like and that's how easy is it for people to be like, Oh, Oh, you know, we have thousands of people, so like I wouldn't. Yeah, like, he could have deflected. He could have totally deflected and been like, "Sorry, no. I can't control that. We got yeah. a thousand people. Fuck off, kid." You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah, or just ignore it. Yeah, <laughs> just fucking ignore it. You can do that too. Right, right, and right. Because people like on my page, like, yeah, if, if you wait a week, like nobody's gonna. I'm. I've done ten stories since then. Like, of course, people are gonna be talking about something else, but to address it and be like, that is a problem. I should probably fix that. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. How'd you become a watch guy? Uh, By the way, I was going to call you out on the GMT when you said this, like, oh, yeah, I still think of myself as poor. Or whatever. I was like, okay, guy. <laughs> you, you saw that yeah, I was, I was nice about it. I was just like, okay, yeah, as I rock my GMT, I, I, no, just, just struggling away over here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, tell me about the watches. How did you become a watch guy? Uh, a, a friend of mine's a jeweler, so he always does, like, really oh. good Okay. You know, well, you and I can talk later on then. He's a nice I'm guy. always he's looking a, for a, a good he's, jeweler. He's friend. a very nice guy. I'll just say that. Okay. He's a very nice but guy. I mean, so did you, cause not everybody's into like Rolexes and things like that. Like I have a total backstory on what made me fall in love with the brand. Do you have anything like that? Or like, you just like, I like expensive watches. Like it just happened. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, Panerai, I have, you know, those things. You obviously knew the sky dweller right away. So you have <laughs> yeah, more I, than just a, like a nice watch. I only have two. I have uh, this GMT and then I have the Starbucks. Okay. And I, I got them as like uh important day. Like yeah. Important my, were they milestone? <laughs> Mine are all representative of like milestone things in my life. Did you set a goal and then accomplish something? Yeah. Yeah. Just like small personal stuff that, but oh come on, dude! Let's come I on! Can't, I can't! I can't! Come on! Why is it? Well, what is? What is it like? Really lame or what? Uh, come on! What is it? Lame. It's lame. No, it's not. No, I ate thirty-five it's, eggs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I finally did thirty-five oh, eggs. Tell copies. Me, tell me the. Tell me the. Tell me the accomplishments. What was the uh, first one? No, I, I, can't, I can't. Really? Yeah, I can't, I can't. Oh, don't get shy on that's, me now. That's stupid. It's stupid. I don't want to do it. No, Next it's tough. No, it's not. It's, I think. Hey, listen. What if it is stupid? Huh? <laughs> what if he tells you? It like, is oh, not yeah, stupid. I, you know, what? I right, think you that's never stupid. Bro. Here's here's the thing. I think there's a lot of value um, 
and people don't ask this. They assume they see shit like that and they think uh, it's a superficial, this or that. But each one of mine represent something that I set a goal for and that nobody else knew about it. I didn't fucking talk about it. I don't share it. Did, on, did people force you to say it on a podcast? No, nobody knows. <laughs> no, These guys don't even like know. We will later. No, he volunteerly says it sometimes <laughs> yeah, on the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so this everything. is this is something that I like. I think that's a cool thing to to do and and to you know what and it, it's not stupid if it's just because it might be to somebody else a stupid goal. It's not a stupid goal. So, <laughs> so uh, the one was I had hit. I never had like a substance abuse problem, but I was eight years. I hadn't drank in eight years. Oh, so I was like, that's, that's, that's that stupid. Said. I know, bro. It's, yeah, and the other was a gift. So it was like not a cool story. Okay. With that one. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's great. Good that's, for you. A, that's, yeah. a, that's, that's a cool thing. Still, do you not drink at all still? No, I haven't drank since 2014. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, good years. for you. So now when you were 17 and kind of a, a shit butt, you were saying, right? You didn't use shit butt, but I'm going to throw shit it in butt. there. That was a shit butt for okay. sure. Okay. Yeah. Were you partying like crazy? A little bit, but not not like a crazy way. Did you ever go down the drug route at all? No. At all? No. Oh, so you haven't no. dabbled? No. I My f whole family is like addictive personality. So you were probably shit. like, so fuck. you're like, yeah. I'll stay away. Yeah. It's like that. I don't know if you've ever seen that thing where there's two people. One's like... Uh, super sober guy and the other's like an addict and they both ask them the same question. Oh, and they're both the same person. Except well, they both have the same answer. Like, yeah. you know, why are you the way you are? Oh, my dad was an addict. My oh, yeah, yeah. I've never seen that. What is he talking about? So it's like a meme. There's two people and it's like, why are you, why, why do you never want to, you know, do drugs or alcohol or why are you addicted? And both of them have the same answer. Like, oh, my dad. Oh, the same answer, but different story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I get and it. it. I mean, it's representative of like how you react and what your mindset is, is who you become. Sure. So some people are like, well, my dad was a fuck off addict, so I should be one. And, or my dad was a fuck off addict, so I shouldn't be one. Yeah. yeah Have you seen, um, cause I agree too, like, and I know that about my family. Have you seen other things in your life where you have that addictive personality? And so you, for sure, man. Oh, I mean, yeah. when I fucking do stories, it's like, that's all I think about. Like when I'm putting something together, like it's all I can think about. I can't sleep until like, I know what I need to know. Can you please get into journalism with all this other big stuff? No, you know, know. why? Yeah, this, we need more of it. That's you have a skill, bro. Yeah. Hold on a second, John. This is a weird time. Are, yeah. are you, okay, are you, you're looking at the world, you're seeing what's going on. It's weird. It's weird as fuck. Shit's yeah. getting crazy. What's it's real, weird. what's true, yeah. And what is true, what is not true, media is completely flipped upside down. Fake news is re like real and, and uh, I think conspiracy theorists now are like 10, oh, like, I mean, uh, just 10 100, I'm 100% yeah. right now, I'm batting 100%. Yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, you yeah. listen to Andy's stuff, it's like, he'll say it and then like three months later it's like damn yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta yeah. Get, that wasn't tinfoil at all <laughs> <laughs> maybe the, maybe these skills and this drivers for something big like that you know yeah i mean i i would love to i would definitely love to as long as i don't get whacked you know don't say that dude. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Don't Come say on. that. Dude. they'll play this clip in three years and be like damn he knew bro we knew that would happen. <laughs> they knew he was gonna die no, no. is there no. any times you ever because i mean i feel like this uh even in even like what we do uh moments of like getting exhausted with like social media and like yeah that, man yeah. i i don't so I don't post on a schedule or like time my stuff or like even care about that. It's like when you feel like if it. If I want to, I do. And if I don't, I don't. And if it's like 3 a.m. and I'm like, oh man, I should put this video out there. Like I just do it. Yeah. So I do it to the point, like there will be like a week where I don't post and I get all these DMs like, are you dead? <laughs> Did he get banned? Why don't I see your stuff anymore? I'm like, dude, chill. Do you intentionally take like detox and like stay off of it intentionally for periods of time? If I want to, like I'm not like tied to it it's like i'm not a slave to it if i want to do it and it's entertaining to me i'm doing it and yeah. if it's like i'm burned out on it i'll take a few days and yeah not post do you have any uh practices for yourself so you work out obviously that's a good health practice yeah, yeah. any others spiritual practice meditation do you like do any other hobbies i probably should but i don't know <laughs> my friend's big into the meditating and mm. the ice baths and that shit and you just lift. Mean, that means mm -hmm. you'd have to bring up all that shit that you. <laughs> I stay with him in Austin for like three days. <laughs> you, you buried all that stuff <laughs> yeah, so I good. Don't right? that out, yeah, man. Yeah. He's like, we'll He's like we're gonna do ice baths and yoga. That's for your midlife crisis. You got time for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep it inside. Yeah, for yeah, now. Keep it you just use it for uh, for <laughs> deadlifting, <laughs> yeah. deadlifting and squatting right yeah, now. Yeah. More watches, yeah, yeah. more deadlifts. Don't do that until your wife forces you. Trust me. Well, I I definitely would like to. I'm gonna put it out there on air right now, and we'll figure it out as we talk going forward. But I would like to do some sort of a collab with you. I really get a kick out of that i feel like we we haven't executed something like that i know how easy it could be of just putting it out there or like a toy drive yeah yeah but something i'd like, like to, i would like to do something percent. with you that would go crazy big i'm in dude. yeah i'm so in it yeah. is That'd so be fun. easy okay. i committed like seven minutes of effort to it last year 
And okay. then like people, we put out a thing like, we like hey. that part. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no, 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 you're like, that's what's kept us from, honestly, is because it's like, oh, who's going to manage it? Who's going to do really. all this stuff? No, here's, it's easy. If you're listening to this and you have like some amount of a following, you can do this. You make a video, you give an address, make sure it's not your address. <laughs> like, uh, what's the address of this place? No. <laughs> <laughs> and then you put out a thing like, hey, uh, volunteers to come in and, and rap on this day, like a couple days before the event and feed them. And people are happy to come and wrap all the fucking gifts. And then you have to find outreach groups like a, a women's shelter. Yeah, that would be the hardest, I would think, is actually finding the people to give the gifts to. That, no. like, so I, My girlfriend this. crushed this okay. this year. Because I was okay. like, we had thousands of toys. And I was like, babe, who, who's going to come? I was going to put up flyers, which was not going to work. And she got on all these like mothers groups in on uh, Facebook mm. and was like posting it everywhere. And those people that were like in shelters and stuff would share it with others. And so mm. it like just spread mm. all crazy and just like random people were showing up that okay. she never even spoke to. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to combine forces. I know we could do it by ourselves, but it'd be kind of fun to do it together and just see what we could do. I'm so in bro. Yeah. I'm okay. so in for that. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Well, then when all we right. get off air, we'll plan that, but it's good, dude. Yeah. Glad to finally have you in person. Same. Yeah, awesome. hey, you're doing, you're doing the Lord's work. Keep it up. <laughs> That's, That's it. it. <laughs> the stay, watchdog. Stay strong, yeah. brother. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Good shit. We'll look out for you. All right. I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible but not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now, there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body